Hello and welcome to Scuzzle Motorsport. I'm Craigie and we are here to start a new YouTube series on this. <laughs> welcome everybody to episode one of Project 300. I'm here today with the owner of this gorgeous Nissan Fairlady 300ZX, Nick Bailey. Hey, dear man. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Nick and I have known each other for a fairly long time with my MX-5 racing, but tell us about yourself. Well, I'm just a car nutter, really. Um, this is my place, Scuzzle Motorsport. Uh, we build fast cars, um, so kind of only fitting to buy a fast car that someone else has built, I suppose. <laughs> right. Nissan made a fast car. Yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of rare. So why the 300 ZX? Gran Turismo. Really? Yeah. Honestly, honestly, Gran Turismo. What um, first one? Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I was a kid growing up playing Gran Turismo. Yeah. And there was like three cars in that game that really stood out because they were just like the fastest, totally unbeatable. Yeah. And uh, this was one of them. Um, the other two, there's one down there actually, the uh, Supra. Yeah. And the Mitsubishi GTO. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, I was quite lucky to get, well, I say lucky, um, but lucky to get a test drive once in a, a GTO, um, and it just ruined everything for me. All oh, the yeah. illusion had gone. It, yeah. it was rubbish. Uh, see, I remember going in one of those as a kid, and I thought at the time it was the best thing ever. Yeah. But yeah. there's something super special about one of these. I've seen them ever since I was young, and I am still under 30, before anyone says. And... Um, there was something about just the look, the way that these go, and the way that these sound that are just like they really sort of buzz home to your inner child, really, don't they? Yeah. Cool. So, um, tell us a bit about this car. Uh, basically, we went out to Bristol to have a look at this, and um, in the photos, it looked like a total dog. Um, paintwork was horrific, uh, which, to be fair, that's about right. Um, but the owner was about as genuine as they come. Um, he knew everything about the car. He'd done all the work on it himself. Um, and he really didn't want to sell it either, which was quite strange. Um, so he was just constantly trying to put us off buying it by telling us all of the issues that it had. Um, so let me show you around it and I'll show you a few of the issues. Paintwork, obviously not the best you've ever seen. Um, we've got a bit of rust blistering on the arts down here, some scrapes along the bumper. And that's pretty much just the beginning of it, really. The boot lid's missing the spoiler. Um, and he's done a pretty bad job of trying to kind of fill the holes where the spoiler was mounted. Also needed a pair of tyres when we bought it, but I've already sorted that out to try and make it drivable for today. The wheels are in a, a pretty bad state as well, um, but you know, they're round, so they balance up okay. So it'll do for now. <laughs> but it's just a genuine honest car. Yeah, the engine works, it sounds healthy, it's not smoking, um, you know, interior trims are kind of hanging off a little bit, <laughs> but um, it is what it is, and I think I've got a bargain. Okay, so we've heard a bit about your car, um, what are the projects for this? What have you got in store? Well, ultimately I want to make it a nice car to drive on the road, yeah. um, that, that's kind of the end goal. But I've got something a bit special I want to try and achieve. 300 kilometers an hour. Awesome. It's a big, it's a big <laughs> target. It's about 186 mile an hour, I think. Bearing in mind this is already thir nearly 30 years old as well. Yeah. Asking that from what potentially it was near enough to out the factories uh, can take a lot of work, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to need probably 550, 600 horsepower. Wow much better brakes to slow yeah. it down again afterwards yeah. um you know and a nice paint job <laughs> so it's going to be hitting some shows as well then yeah yeah, yeah. any form of motorsport in there um probably not okay. probably not so much just just trying to do maybe the top speed run yeah. here and there see what it will actually do yeah um maybe even 200 mile an hour if we can manage it that would be incredible wouldn't it that would be mad yeah that'd be awesome okay so You've got an idea as to where Nick wants to take this. You've seen it's a condition so far. Should we go for a drive? Let's go for a drive. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ooh! Some turbo's working. <laughs> 
Jesus. God, that picks up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting that. No? No. Uh, for a big barge, it's pretty rapid, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Even when you're you know, really low in the revs and off boost. Yeah. yeah you can feel the torque of the V6. Yeah. And, yeah, like I say, it doesn't pick up really well at lower revs, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's there. You know, it's a big engine. Has this had any tuning at all? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. I mean, the, the previous owner knew a lot about the car. Yeah. Um, and that's something he didn't actually mention, was whether it had been tuned. Um, so we've got, again, typical early 90s Japanese turbo stuff. We've got a turbo timer down here. <laughs> so it's had some stuff done, but yeah. I don't think it's ever actually been, you know, the performance hasn't been improved yeah. on. When you get up into the revs and get it on boost, it reaches about the point where it should do. Yeah. Um, which suggests that the turbos are running standard boost pressure. So I, I have to assume it's, it's factory power. Or factory power minus 20 something years of losses. So, out of interest, you're obviously an MX5 guru. Yeah. And that's, that's where the name Nick Bailey, the first thing you do think about is, is a tuned MX5. Yeah. Bearing in mind, this is about 600 kilos more based on that figure you just gave me around, you know. Yeah. How does this compare to a to a five? Does it feel like just a bigger five or? Yeah, kind of. It, yeah, like I say, it's, it feels really well balanced, um, which is the surprise. Yeah, you know, I thought it would just feel really heavy and, and yeah. yeah, kind of a bit vague, but it, it doesn't. It feels great. Um, and I suppose in power terms, it hasn't got that real snappy get up and go you get with the turbo and MX-5s, so yeah, that's sort of 250 horsepower kind of area. But yet, once it's pulling and it's on boost, it feels stronger. It feels like there's more power. Um, you yeah, know, it just, just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling, and, and it actually gets quite scary. So we're sat at about 3,000 RPM now. I come on the front one, and it's sort of it's fairly instant. No big ball at all, but suddenly it's getting a bit crazy. Yeah. And, and we only really got to 5,000 RPM then. Yeah. So it just builds and builds, and, and the longer you're on the throttle, the, the bigger it gets. Yeah. So in terms of the um, modifications or, or the power upgrades and various other things, I know you've touched on briefly, obviously, we're going to be looking at aiming it towards that 300 kilometers, if we can, 200 miles per hour, you know, that's ultimate mm. goal. What modifications do you, have you researched or, or have you considered to start sort of looking at this to achieve that goal? It's a new car to me, to be honest, so I don't know a huge amount about what has been done in the past. Um, I mean, there's, there's stuff on Google, you know, you can always look up information on Google, but <laughs> it's figuring out what information is actually genuine yes. um, and what is just people that have done an upgrade and because they don't want to see that they've wasted their money, they, they bang on about how good it was. Yeah. So I'm going to look at it with a completely fresh set of eyes with the knowledge that I've learned from what I have tuned in the past mm. um, and just come at it, you know, ignore everything else I've seen and just do what I want to do. Turbos! <laughs> so, so we've got <laughs> two turbos, yeah? Um, the turbos that the car came with are a, a Garrett unit that's based on a T25 footprint. Yeah. Um, they were specifically designed for this car, which is quite cool. We're not going to stick with stock turbos. I can promise you that right yeah. now. Um, I've got something in mind for that. I need to run it by the man in the know at some point. Um, so, guy out there who knows stuff about turbos, I won't mention names right now, <laughs> you will probably be getting a phone call. And then there's numbers floating around the internet of, you know, 400 horsepower, 500 horsepower. Um, you know, it, who knows what's real? Um, but if we go with the idea of, you know, 400 and then people are saying they need pistons, chances are it's not the strength of the piston that's the problem. It, it's more likely that the compression ratio of the piston and on, you know, UK fuel that we can buy over here, you're probably just hitting the knock threshold, um, which is stopping you from breaking the 400 horsepower barrier. Right. So, I mean, I've learned a lot through the MX-5s and through other cars. That people, I don't 
don't know, this is going to sound really bad to a lot of people that tune a lot of cars, but people don't seem to understand that 400 horsepower, yeah, okay, knock threshold, they've changed the turbos for hybrids, they've put an ECU on it, but they've hit a knock threshold because the octane rating of the fuel, because of the way the engine flows, because of the way the exhaust flows, the intake, everything all adds up and creates that threshold that you yeah. can't get past. So I think that actually we can probably get further than most people just by understanding the way the engine works and getting it to breathe properly so that we can remove that knock threshold or at least push it a lot further up. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if 500 horsepower was possible on standard internals. Um, I'm not really planning on leaving the engine entirely stock. Yeah. Um, I think trying to push to 500 again, yeah, okay, I think I might be able to do it, but at the same time, if we make it a bit stronger, change the pistons, which it sounds to me like the only part that needs replacing really is pistons, maybe a set of ARP studs all around, um, and then we've got a pretty strong engine, to yeah. be honest, because the bottom end, other than that, is, is really quite a strong engine. I mean, I've got to come up with a power goal to achieve the speed I want to do. Um, and realistically, I think 550 horsepower should do 300 kilometers an hour. Um, probably 600 would do 200 mile an hour. So, you know, that, that's got to be the sensible kind of area that I'm aiming for. I just need to figure out exactly how I want the power curve to look um, and, and build something based on that, really. Yeah. <laughs> Way too technical. So, in terms of power. Yes. What do you think is running at the moment? Based on your arse. Let me put my foot down again and I'll tell you by the end of it. Slow down a bit so we don't have to break the speed limit. Well, that's about 150, 200, 230, 240. Enough for the road. It's making enough for the road. It's making more than enough for the road. If I had a guess, I reckon we might be doing oh, possibly 230-ish at the wheels. done <laughs> yeah my butt dino's wrong <laughs> um <clears throat> so we've measured the power at the wheels and i uh, my guess was about 230 on it mm. yeah we're about 50 shy of that uh, 40 50 something like that um so it's definitely down on power um so i've got a couple of runs up on the screen at the moment um basically the torque's peaking about where they say it should um, but just a little bit down uh, and then it just kind of dies really this top end is just completely flat uh, so a bit of a disappointment really um, but we collected a bit of data while we were there um, which if I just pull this up so this is the air fuel ratio um, and the scale up the side there and the lower down it goes the richer it's running um, and what's quite interesting is we've actually put the probe up both exhausts so we can see what both banks are doing um, and that's quite nice that they're actually both quite well matched which is a good sign of a healthy engine um, but at this point especially it's going so rich I mean the sensor that we use actually 
kind of maxes out at about 10.5. So anything richer than that, and we, we don't even know what's going on. Um, and at full revs, we're actually hitting that sometimes. So it's not as good as it should be, but it does give me quite a lot of room for improvement and some really good ideas where to go from here. Right, so that is pretty much it. We've now got a baseline in place. Um, sadly, it wasn't as high as we both thought it would be because weirdly the car does drive and feel so much quicker than the power that was actually output on the dyno. So next step is going to be doing nothing at all with the power because um, the whole engine is going to come out eventually anyway for full rebuild. But this is what Nick has decided to start working on even before we start the next. So it just gives you a little bit of a preview because the uh, the brakes are quite scary. Um, there's you have to put a, apply a hell of a lot of pressure before anything actually really happens but um yeah there's so so much more to come in this series the next video is going to be on fitting some monster brakes um, and some customization in order to make them fit uh, which nick will be working on and we will have uh, lots and lots of technical information with some maybe some cad design in there for you as well um, so yeah i hope you like the video uh, this is a very short and sweet introduction but hopefully it's, it's captured your imagination and it's going to keep you engaged for the rest of the series so for now i've been craigie that's been nick we're at scuzzle motorsport with the 300 zx peace yeah, yeah, yeah.